Um, I'm Roisin, uh, the Academic Manager at Babel Academy of English. Um, so we're based in Dublin City Centre. We have uh, adult students and then throughout the year we'd also have junior groups and a summer school as well. Okay. Can I start by asking you uh, what challenges has the pandemic posed in your school? Sure. Um, so I guess the the, the big challenge uh, initially was just in March when we had to uh, close the school building basically uh, with one day's less than one day's notice. So so that was that was huge because we just had to move online kind of suddenly. And although now we're all familiar with Zoom and that kind of thing, I guess even though people would have used things like Skype and, and other platforms, still kind of the familiarity with with online teaching and learning is definitely um it was much less than it was now so so I guess that that was a big challenge as well for people and um, people always get a bit scared when something is new um and then I guess the other thing was the the uncertainty um because throughout the last couple of months a lot of things have been changing you have updates on you know opening reopening um closing and you know visa situation and then the green list for flights so i suppose yeah the, the uncertainty of what what was to come was another thing to manage with with people and then at the actual reopening as well when, when we we're opening our doors and the nervousness about you know making sure everybody was safe and um yeah just that that everybody was okay both physically and mentally <laughs> yeah yeah that 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 that's the, the the first concern was that is everybody safe is everybody yeah okay absolutely um mm. so uh, what responses then did you did you have to that to those challenges and how did that develop because i know it was kind of a, a, an evolving situation anyway yeah yeah i suppose um embracing the fact that it was evolving <laughs> was really important um initially it was yeah a quick response we we really had to give so we had to um, ourselves get to grips with with technology and and make sure that teachers were were trained up so I think that that was really important to to get everybody on board quickly and get their feedback and make sure that people were comfortable and confident going forward that you know when we were going online that that was really important um, and then just being flexible making sure that everyone kind of was aware that we're all in it together. And definitely, I think when students and teachers went online, um, that was actually really nice. There was lovely communication between people, you know, everyone was sharing what they were learning. Um, so that idea that it was it was a process was really important. Um, I think as well, just reaching out, being open, um, definitely working with other schools, um, people like yourself and, and other, um other you know colleagues in the industry talking and sharing ideas was hugely important and involving um experts as well so when we were reopening we uh worked with a safety consultant to help us develop our plan um to obviously then we had to think okay this is our plan but we have to be flexible and to change it uh, as needed but definitely engaging people who who know a lot about that was really important and then, you know, involving a lot of feedback. So um, we definitely um, learned from talking to students because they are, you know, it's a new experience for them. And for us, we, we don't know how, how they are gonna be able to access um, different platforms that we have because they have different devices, they're in different locations, different internet connections. So really involving them was hugely important. Um, but I, I suppose just, when you're mentally adapting as well, it, it, it's really important um, to have that communication. I, I'll just show you actually um, just the online classes. So I guess we we thought it very important that we would keep um, online classes to be live, you know, so that students have, they're looking at their teacher, they're, uh, you know, communicating. So they have lots of, um, you know, opportunities to, to give feedback as well throughout the lesson and to have as much of you know all the benefits that they can get you know that they would have in the classroom so um let me just see here okay um oops yeah so this is our yeah <laughs> an example of our online class um and i suppose it was nice as well for students to to be able to get to know each other online through things like breakout rooms depending on the platform that you use you know we were able to to do that um i think 
that for students, we had some students who start their course with us while online. So we didn't actually get to meet them in person. So um, having the, the video uh, aspect to it was, was really lovely and important. Um, also as well, uh, we, we decided, and actually this is something we'll bring uh, into kind of what we do going forward is being able to have an online induction with people before they actually start their course. So obviously there's an importance in training people and checking that their technology is working, you know, before they have their first lesson, before their first day. But now we are thinking, of course, in the future, when students are, are coming to Ireland, for example, before they even leave their home country, it's really nice to be able to give them an idea of what to expect to talk to them about it. And they see your face before they actually arrive as well. And that, that familiarity is um, just important in making people feel comfortable. Yeah, I, I think it has brought up kind of the fact that that's possible you know of course it was always possible yeah. before but we never really kind of <laughs> well, that's it. yeah yeah that, that's definitely uh learning for us going forward I, I i do think it's really funny that we had we did have all this technology before you know before the pandemic hit and, and we had to um we really had to use it but now i guess it's just kind of made me think i think another staff as well I think well what is out there that we that we haven't really explored yet that we could use in non-crisis times, you know, in a bit more of a of a gradual way uh, to bring things in. So yeah, that that's definitely yeah funny. So, so what was what were your students telling you about uh, the situation and how they were coping with it and uh, how they were responding to what you were trying to do for them? Sure. Well, um, so initially when we went online, um, we we did a survey with students to to find out, you know, how how are they getting on, um, and then we also went into the classes. We would drop into into the the online classes. So, um, just share with you some of the feedback from um, from the actual survey. So this is when we actually when we went back into the classroom, <laughs> just on our, our uh, uh, safety procedures in place and students coming back in on the first day. Um, but yeah, so so while online, we we did a survey and we just wanted to check how students felt. Actually, it was overwhelmingly positive, which was really good to hear. We did fear that that people would um, have bigger problems than they actually had. So that was a relief and um, that was great to know and that some students were actually saying, I, you know, this is really flexible, really good for me, you know, going forward, I, I'm happy with this as an aspect of, of my learning. Um, so, so that was really nice. So um, I guess things like that, that the, the platforms and the tools that we were using were easy to access was really important. Um, and certainly, as I said, the induction that we give students before they come back, you know, if they're uh, sorry, before they start the course is definitely important so that they're, you know, when they're nervous on their first day, they don't have to be afraid of technology as well as you know meeting all the new students and the, <laughs> the new teacher um, and then that they were getting the same amount of practice particularly speaking practice in the classroom um, was was really important um, so yeah students like things like coffee at home and not wearing a mask when they're online um, but but also from talking to students we got little small pieces of feedback that you know that were really useful and important like um depending on the device they have what documents were easy for them to open or not so um that was really good and then giving them a bit of training on using breakout rooms um and then in terms of say the the duration of the class thinking about how you know when we have breaks and how long the break is that kind of thing just they're just small things but they're very practical and can really make a difference in in a, a lesson during the day when we have you know a couple of hours online that's really important to be making sure that that people have the correct breaks um and yeah but i i guess as i said generally really positive feedback from students and from teachers as well um some of our teachers wouldn't have been familiar with with using um the technology that we're using now and they've actually gained a lot of confidence from being able to use it now and have it as an additional tool going forward. Uh, and was technical support for teachers and for students something then that you had to kind of build into your program? Absolutely, yes, yes. So with the teachers before they taught online, we had a couple of training sessions. And what was actually really useful as well was giving them a chance to observe another teacher um, 
teaching. So the teacher who was observing then was had the the kind of the point of view of being a student. So they were in the class looking at another teacher doing it. So and they were able to participate and maybe chat to the students in breakout rooms. That was really helpful. Um, then with students as well as the introduction that they get before they start their course also just throughout online that we are there and available um other staff if they can't log on that they email us they get a response straight away and um, because there's there's always technical difficulties no matter what you're doing so just that they they're able to access us all of the time during during class is important too how do you see the situation developing then in the in the medium uh, term or um, medium to long term in your context yeah so I suppose it's very hard to know in terms of you know what's going to happen uh, globally that <laughs> the situation and and travel um but we definitely have had inquiries you know from people who are interested in traveling and want to travel um as soon as they can um safety is a huge thing so people are you know they want to know what are your procedures what do you have in place um so that you you can show them uh, what what to expect when they come um, in terms of teaching and learning, I think definitely keeping an aspect of, of online as part of how we deliver the program is, is really important because even when we were back in the classroom uh, for a couple of months there, we found that students still wanted to access the online platform in terms of like downloading documents when outside of class time. Uh, maybe if they've missed a class, they can see what the teacher has done. Um, they can you know, submit writing assignments, different things like that. So certainly the way that we are delivering classes will will benefit from, from what has happened in the last couple of months. Yeah, no, absolutely. Once it, it, we've discovered things that we're not going to put back in, in the box yeah. now, now that... Uh, uh, we're, we're there. What's your feeling about online versus face-to-face -face classes? Uh, will one take over from the other or is that not possible? What, how do you see it? Yeah, um, I don't think online will will completely take over from, from in-person classes. Um, I don't think so because particularly some students um, really like the, the in-classroom face-to-face classes and um, despite becoming more familiar with technology, it's still a bit of a challenge and they just prefer face-to-face. -face. So I don't think it's gonna completely take over. I think um, for some students though, it gives extra flexibility. And if people um, can't travel then, you know, or depending on their work, that kind of thing, or maybe they want um, sort of to be able to access online, out, you know, maybe in the evening, that kind of thing, being able to offer different types of programs for those kind of students will, you know, we, we're adding that to, to our portfolio programs and that that's going to be, you know, that's going to be um, developed going forward. Uh, but as I said, with our face to face classes, there will still be an element of online access there and available for students so that it just adds to the face to face interaction. Would you say that having to meet these challenges and solve those problems has improved how we do things overall? I would, yeah, definitely. Um, I I'm surprised that I'm saying this. I, I you know back in March I would probably wouldn't have, <laughs> have thought that I would be, but um, yeah, just definitely. And as we said, talked about earlier, realizing there are you know there's an awful lot that we could be doing and exploring and trying and testing um, in terms of technology and just thinking differently about programs, opening up to different methods of, of teaching and learning and the, the idea that it's continuous improvement all the time. There's no, there's no end to it, that you're always going to have to adapt. Yes, we have the pandemic at the moment, but who knows what's going to happen in the future. There could be something else and um, that's a major challenge. So just that we kind of always keep that that flexibility and the communication with people that, you know, how are you getting on? Can we do this better? Is there some other way um, that we can uh, adapt programs to, to meet your needs? 